<laughs> Congratulations, Dr. Adamai. Welcome to Arta, Mario's wife, his true Arta of love, mother, sister, and family. There were two things Mario enthusiastically shared with me when I first met him three years ago. One, he told me where he is from. <laughs> and two, he lyrically declared that he was a musical performer. <laughs> As we heard just a little bit ago, according to Mario, a gangster rapper. <laughs> It's not often that I don't know how to respond to someone. <laughs> that day I was speechless. <laughs> the first thing a person may notice about Mario is that he loves to play dress up. <laughs> Look at that outfit today. <laughs> Even if it's retreat weekend at the beach, Mario loves his suits. <laughs> Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? <laughs> yeah, you look good in that little boy suit. <laughs> Be careful what you say later, I can still give you the boot. <laughs> I wasn't planning on being here today as my niece is celebrating her own graduation from college today. But when I heard that Mario was working on some mumble rap to try to guess, <laughs> I decided this was a show I simply could not miss. <laughs> but what does one say at graduation for a doctor who also happens to be a gangster rapper? <laughs> well, I turned 50 this year and I've learned to check with my wife whenever I get any good ideas. <laughs> so as I talked to my wife about today, she said to me, this year, behave yourself. <laughs> I was a little bothered that she said that, <laughs> as opposed to have a good time. Or <laughs> you know, behave yourself. I responded with Yvette, I'm a grown-ass man. <laughs> if that answer, then behave like one. <laughs> Yesterday, I kept thinking to myself, I need a sign, something, something to tell me what I should say today. I was flipping through stations on the radio trying to get some inspiration when finally a song I recognized started playing, an OG song from back in the day, something I recognized. F the police. <laughs> now that's my sign, I said to myself. Well, the next song that came on was a song by Justin Bieber called, I'm Sorry. <laughs> What a dilemma. <laughs> In medicine, we often talk about the risks and the benefits of certain procedures. We're also taught to document our medical decision making, our assessment and plan of care. My assessment. Tachycardia. <laughs> it's graduation, and it should be fun. And it seems like it's easier to ask for forgiveness than it is for permission. <laughs> Plan? Let's get this party started. <laughs> Dr. Dorr? <laughs> you know I've been patient. <laughs> Take deep breaths. One, two, three, four. Mario, you're about to forget I just walked through that door. The last time we battled, I thought you had learned. If you mess with fire, you're bound to get burned. <laughs> well, 
Well, doctor, this time pay attention. You may want to take notes of all that I mentioned. <laughs> you think I'm soft just because I'm humble? Not today, Mario. I came here to rumble. <laughs> gangster rapper, but today I'm done cleaning up your disaster. <laughs> now here's a little story I'm going to tell of an Albanian brother I know so well. <laughs> yes, it's true, Mario was born in Albania. He reminds us every chance he gets. His parents immigrated to Wisconsin when he was eight years old. During Mario's junior year in high school, his father was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Although this diagnosis often implies a short life expectancy, his desire to see his family succeed allowed him to witness Mario's graduation from high school and then from the University of Wisconsin. Mario worked hard in undergrad, finishing college in just three years as he wanted his father to see him start medical school. And he did. I am saddened to say that his father passed away the week before finals during his first year of medical school, but seven years after being told he only had months to live. Mario thinks we have a romance. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mario. <laughs> I only love my wife and my daughters. Lo siento. <laughs> But well, we are brothers. I guess I'm the son of the older brother. <laughs> so I will say this. I'm proud of you, Mario. And I know that your father is looking down right now, and he's smiling, and he is proud. He's proud of the man and the doctor you are becoming. Medicine is about a good story, a good history, and then some data. Sometimes lots of data. Well, I have lots of data, lots of information about Mario's volunteer research activities during undergrad and medical school and residency. Eight pages of data, actually. <laughs> Most notable is Mario's work in Albania for the last several years, as he's helped organize a free clinic providing care to medically underserved in a region in Albania. English, Albanian, Spanish, or even German. Mario is committed to providing language-appropriate medical care to his ever-expanding community. Mario's chosen profession is medicine, but his passion is music. Little brother, stick to your day job. <laughs> because although some think it's cute, and your wife finds it sweet whenever you speak to try to compete, your rhymes are silly, like Trump's random tweets. <laughs> but let me tell you what's gangster. A good doctor is gangster. It takes effort, but it's totally worth it. Showing up to clinic every day, not because you get paper, but because you want to. That's gangster. When you diagnose and successfully treat a patient with an extensive pneumonia, that's gangster. When you order a stress test and then a guy gets a cat and then a stent because you picked up on very subtle ischemia, that's gangster. When your shift is over, but you stay to comfort a family who just lost their son, that's gangster. Dr. Adamai, always keep it gangster. You took some chances when you started at the bottom. You climbed that mountain like the cream of the crop who rose to the top. Don't ever stop listening to each patient's story, for within their story lies the diagnosis. And just like that, Mario, after three years, tu contrato, your contract, like this intro, is almost over. <laughs> I'm counting the patients, I'm loading my charts, I'm writing down names, I'm making a list, I'm checking it twice, I'm getting them in. The old must be dying, the young must be lit. Your game is off balance, I'm still on my shift. Two generations of doctors and rappers, you ate 
you act the two legends cannot coexist. My Benz is glowing, in Wisconsin it's snowing. <laughs> Three years and it comes down to this. Are you sure you still want to diss? <laughs> you and Arta all the best as you start your new life and your new job in Wisconsin. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Mario Ademai, perhaps no. the next Prime Minister of Albania and Kaiser Woodland Hills' own gangster rapper. <laughs> So I truly appreciate you coming here. And uh, my co-residents all thought that you were going to be here. I, I found out last night that you were going to actually come. The backup plan, like you told everyone, was that you were going to write a rap song and have Dr. Gorolnik over there. Where are you at, Dr. Gorolnik? <laughs> You're going to have Dr. Gorolnik come, come here and rap the song. So let me tell you what the problem is with that. <laughs> so Dr. Garcia has a lot of street cred. He's from East LA, grew up in the hood. So he's as gangster as it gets. Okay? He's a family medicine doctor. You know family medicine doctors, we go through a lot, we're tough. Dr. Grohl that grew up in the suburbs of Canada, he's a dermatologist. What's he gonna do, come up here and make fun of my moles? I just don't know how to do So I'm glad it worked out this way. But to all you guys, thank you so much. Um, I wrote down my speech because I want to make sure that I don't forget anyone to thank for my family members, friends, all you guys in here, attendees, everyone that makes Kaiser Hospital run. Um, so I wanted to pretty much start by thanking my mom, my beautiful mom. She's the one in the back over there, looking at me, smiling, all cute. So to my mom. <laughs> to my beautiful mom, you have sacrificed so much for me. You and dad brought me and my sister to America when I was seven years old. You traded your jobs as professors in Albania to become manual labor workers at a meat factory in Milwaukee just so that my sister and I could chase our dreams and reach our full potential here in the land of opportunities. There aren't enough words in the dictionary for me to be able to fully express my gratitude to you for that. I love you so much and thank you, Mom. To my dad, like Dr. Garcia said, my dad is not physically here today with us, but he is watching over us in heaven. Some of you know that my dad was the reason why I ended up falling in love with the field of medicine. When I was in high school, our family and our American dream lives turned upside down when my dad was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. At that time, he was only given six months to live. But through his optimism, through his will to live and love to maximize life and his happiness, he was able to fight for another seven years beyond his initial prognosis. During those seven years, my sister and I my sister and I accomplished all the dreams that my parents had for us. My sister and I accompanied my dad to all his doctor's appointments and chemotherapy sessions in order to help translate for my parents and to do our best to help them, help them navigate the medical system here in America. It was during those exposures that I saw just how impactful a doctor's interaction can be to the patient's optimism and hope. <laughs> Seeing my family feel helpless, lost, and scared during those years inspired me to want to become a doctor so that I could make my life's work to be alongside people during their most difficult moments in their lives. I want to be able to help them get better and get back to spending time with their loved ones and doing the things that they love the most. 
doing the things that make them tick in life. I promised my dad that I would treat every single patient that sat across me in the doctor's office as if it were my own father. And I've strived to do that every single day in clinic as best as I could. On the day that I received my first white coat ever in medical school during our white coat ceremony, I took my white coat off and I placed it on my dad's shoulders to wear because he deserved it the most. He deserves to have the letters MD after his name, just like me. You're the reason for everything I've been able to achieve. I love you, Dad. You're my inspiration and my best friend in life. And I want to thank you for inspiring me to reach my potential and to live life full of love. Arta, my beautiful wife, out of my league, where are you? There you are. <laughs> Arta, my classmates, my co-residents are tired of me talking about you all the time. You're my soulmate in life. Anyone who knows me knows how much a lover of love all Albanians are. <laughs> For us, love and marriage and building a family is absolutely the most beautiful and exciting thing to happen to an individual. You, Arta, are my rock. Your name in Albanian means gold because that's what your heart is made out of. I tell you this all the time, you are by far the greatest thing to have ever come into my life. And anytime I ever have an off day or I'm feeling down, just the thought of you picks me right back up right away because having someone like you as my soulmate is the biggest prize God could have ever given me in life. I have everything I could want in this life because I have you. And because of that, I will always be a winner. You keep me humble when my overconfidence kicks in, which is often. <laughs> you are truly a, mo a modern day Teresa, Mother Teresa in my eyes, and absolutely the most beautiful and stunning girl in the world. Again, way out of my league, I just want to emphasize that again. But that's okay because I'm proud of myself for landing me an Albanian goddess like yourself. <laughs> Together we have to fight and broken so many cultural and geographic barriers that for many people is voodoo, especially in our culture. You're from Texas where it's hot. I'm from Wisconsin where it's a little bit less hot. <laughs> You're originally from the north of Albania where the people are known for their bravery and loyalty and feistiness. And I'm from the south of Albania where the people are known for our charisma <laughs> and big noses. <laughs> You're Catholic, and I'm Muslim. You're beautiful, and so am I. <laughs> Thank you for being who you are, and for making me a great person, a greater person every single day. I can't wait until we have 100 kids together. <laughs> With your permission, of course, I love you. <laughs> to my sister, Alderelda, her husband, Nico, my beautiful niece, Archeola, my handsome nephew, Francesco, thank you and I love you guys so much. You guys are the main reason why I chose to come back to Wisconsin after residency. I want to see my niece and nephew grow up into the amazing human beings they will become someday. I love them so much. Alda and Nico, every, anytime I ever needed anything throughout college, medical school, you two went out of your way to provide for me. You drove two and a half hours back and forth between Milwaukee and Madison to bring me groceries, to iron my clothes, because you know I can't iron. <laughs> you helped me pay my tuition, you helped me pay for my textbooks. You literally sacrificed everything to help me make it through all my training and education. And I love you guys so much for that. Thank you so much. To my strikingly handsome brother-in-law, Stefan. Wherever you are. Ladies, he's single. <laughs> <laughs> and to his parents, Tonini and Leta, over there. To my uh, parents-in-law. Thank you guys for everything that you have done. Thank you for trusting me with your daughter's heart. For supporting me. And always encouraging me to dream big. I still remember the first time I met all of you over breakfast. When Arta and I first started dating. I remember Arta's mom being so shy when she talked to me. She would blush and turn red and turn away every time I talked to her. I felt like I was on a date with her mom instead of Arta. 
but we've come a long way. I love you guys so much. You guys are you guys are such an exemplary family. You guys are such role models for me, for everyone that knows you guys. I love you guys so much, and thank you for your support. To Gerke and Eta, my aunt and uncle in New York, thank you for supporting me throughout all my education and life. Thank you for being there for my father when he needed help the most. Thank you for lending me, me, lending me money <laughs> um, to be able to pay my tuition. They pretty much helped me uh, make it throughout medical school because of that. For all that, I owe you a lot of love and thanks and a lot of money, which I'll pay back soon. <laughs> After I buy a nice little Mercedes, I'll pay you back, I promise. But thank you. To all my family members and friends in America and Albania and around the world, thank you so much. All my amazing attendees and residency in medical school, my mentors, you guys are the greatest. Administration, staff, Donna, Sandra, Andrea, everyone. You guys, we would not run without you guys. All the amazing doctors I've ever learned from, Dr. Levitt, Garcia, Woodward, Dean McBride, Dr. Alizzi, you guys are amazing and thank you so much. Dr. Garcia, I don't have to say any more about you because I think everyone understands the kind of character you are. You're a tremendous physician, you're very old school, and you are an official gangster rapper with me because of what you did today, that was amazing, so thank you. <laughs> I wanted to take a moment um, to especially recognize someone that I think sometimes flies under the radar when it comes to how much you have given to this program. That is Dr. Levitt. Where are you, Dr. Levitt? Back there. So Dr. Levitt, we may not be able to fully appreciate all of your contributions to our program since you're semi-retired now, but I wanted to remind everyone that Dr. Levitt has been here since day one of this program. So I guess he's an original gangster like this, Garcia, wherever you are. So Dr. Levitt, thank you so much for pretty much making our program run, for your contributions to us and the medical students that rotate with us because you helped with all their scheduling. Thank you for teaching residents year after year. You're an amazing doctor, teacher, and friend. You're the second best dressed doctor in this room right now. <laughs> after me. And then, uh, I just wanted to say thank you because even though, uh, even though today you're not you know, at the capacity that it used to be back then when you first started with the residency, I think sometimes we forget that you have been here since day one and for that we appreciate it. So thank you. Big round of applause for Dr. Levin. Thank you. One more page, I promise I'm almost done. My amazing co-residents, across all years you guys are my inspiration. I won't spend too much time talking about you here because I got the chance to tell you all individually how I felt uh, about you during our beach hangout for our wellness day last week. But just always know how I appreciate your passion and enthusiasm so much. Thank you especially to my office mates, Moore Shapiro and Tammy Lynn. Where on God's beautiful earth would I be today without you two, I swear. I'm not the most detail-oriented person and everyone knows that which basically means I never know where I'm supposed to be each day, <laughs> since I never look ahead of my calendar schedule. But you two knew my schedule better than me. It always kept me on track, so Dr. Doerr, if I ever wasn't where I was supposed to be for any clinics, blame Tammy Moore. <laughs> <laughs> Tammy Lynn, you have such a kind and generous heart. You at first come off across as being very shy, but once you get to know you, Tammy, you see how amazing and compassionate and beautiful and smart and caring and artistic you are. More Shapiro, you and Ben are role models for Arta and I, both as parents and as husband and wife. I love how much you guys love your kids. I think culturally we share so much, so many similarities between us, so much that I officially grant you a lifetime honorary Albanian membership. <laughs> Wow, it's a big deal, it's worth it financially, it's a big deal. Uh, welcome to the club, Ben. Um, to Joe, the caring, fatherly figure of our group. Christina, the smart, feisty, independent Russian. I don't know why I did that with feisty. <laughs> to Bilal, my buff and fit brother, who shares the same love for sports medicine as me. Bilal and I were best friends first year, we hung out every day. And then I realized how much he works out and I just couldn't keep up. <laughs> so we started making out less because of that. But you guys are bound to do some amazing things in this world. I am truly privileged to have trained alongside such great human beings like yourselves. And I thank you all for everything that you have taught me. To everyone that makes this hospital run again, thank you. To Albania. <laughs> to Albania. <laughs> Thank you for making me so damn patriotic and proud of our beautiful culture. 
This has to be the first time someone has thanked a country up here. <laughs> so thank you, Albania. Finally, finally, I just wanted to say I'm so, so sorry to everyone because I initially had wanted to do a rap song for all you guys for my graduation. I have been promising it for three years, and I'm so sorry because you bet I made it. <laughs> I'm gonna put you through two minutes of torture listening to your favorite music genre, or rap music. I see you, Ben. Um, before I play the song, on a bit of a more. Before I play the song, wait, pause it real quick. On a real quick note, um, as Dr. Garcia mentioned, every summer um, we go to Albania to do a free clinic, so I just want to extend an invitation to all you guys. If you are ever interested in volunteering for the future, just let me know. Give me your contact um, information, I'll write it down. We're going this coming July for our next trip. And for the future, I really uh, love the work I do over there and I think it'd be a good experience for everyone just to kind of see a different side of things. Albania is in the heart of Europe, so a lot of people and a lot of organizations forget about it sometimes, but its healthcare system is that of a third world country. So um, if you guys ever want to support you either via volunteering or donations, let me know, I'll get your contact information. And with that, I had to make a rap song. I mean, I heard Dr. Garcia is going to come up here and diss me. I'm not going to diss you, Garcia, so don't worry. But I hope don't that you guys worry. enjoy the song. <laughs> <laughs> I thought today was about making us feel good, Garcia. <laughs> all right, so I uh, made this rap song. We're going to turn it up all the way, and I'm going to play it for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy it. In the meanwhile, I'm going to stand here probably blushing. Don't look at me when this is playing. I didn't it. <laughs> all right, enjoy it, guys. I'm a Kaiser, 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 I'm a first student to the teacher, you can call it sensei. Now I'm a full grown doctor, no more residence. Now I'm a stuffer, he's become Albania's president. I'm a stuffer, he's got me feeling super old. Three years of residency got me feeling super old. Four years of med school that got me feeling super broke. Ten years of education just to diagnose a cold. Yeah. <laughs> My son just graduated, the first thing I'm gonna buy is my mama a Mercedes And thanks for the support to my beautiful wifey Everyone in this room is wondering why you even like me And they want to fight me, they want antibiotics I tell them it's a cold and they ask me for narcotics <laughs> Hey, white coat on my back, hey, shout out to my biggest fan, Dr. Go, where you at? <laughs> I hope it's not a shocker, I'm just like Dr. Dre, except I'm actually a real doctor. And shout out to my classmates, you are all my hero. I wish we could all retire by marrying Ben Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs> so fast that the beat on track, I see and be the beat better. Believe in me, or see me, just a dream. I sit to keep over it until I feel like this for me. I'll be empty and see, see me be me, cause I'm gonna be best I can be. I'm the Kaiser, 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 Kaiser. I was a student to the teacher, you can call me sensei Now I'm a full grown doctor, no more residence Now next step for me is become Albania's president My scrubs are ripped, white coat filthy My socks don't match, but I'm still looking pretty <laughs> Oh my god, how I hate it when a nurse came just to tell me that my patient's constipated I don't need a doctor, I swear it's the greatest I love helping people, I love all Smiles on the face as I cry, so we're thriving for all this ungracious. So thank you, 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 thank you. That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed that.